When Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Bell designed Central Park back in the 1850s, they imagined an immediate respite from the city's hustle and bustle. Built as the first urban landscape park in the United States, Central Park is not only a nature preserve within the city, but also home to a multitude of attractions for local New Yorkers and tourists alike. It receives 38 million visitors each year, and with so much to do and see, it can all seem pretty daunting. Today, I show you all the cool spots you won't want to miss when visiting this massive park in the center of Manhattan. So sit back, relax, and leave it up to me to give you the lowdown on the best parts to check out. Without further ado, here are my top 20 must-see places in Central Park. Number 1. The Central Park Conservatory this is Central Park's own mini botanical garden. Located on the Upper East Side, you can enter the beautiful flower gardens through the Vanderbilt Gate at the corner of 105th Street and 5th Avenue. This six-acre formal garden consists of three unique gardens in the Italian, French, and English styles. The conservatory garden is officially designated as a quiet zone and offers a peaceful setting for leisurely strolls, reading, and a colorful backdrop for stunning wedding pictures. Number 2. The Central Park Zoo Originating in 1864 and located off of East 64th Street, this small zoo is the first known public zoo in New York City. Open all throughout the year, you'll find over 130 species of animals including sea lions, penguins, reptiles, farm animals, and so much more. Over the years, many of the animals have become cherished members of the New York community and have held a special place in the hearts of many New Yorkers. Number 3. Woolman and Lasker Rink Yes, Central Park has two official skating rinks. Woolman Rink, which is located on the east side between 62nd and 63rd Streets, and Lasker Rink, which is located on the northern end of the park between 106th and 108th Streets. Both rinks are open for skating from November through March. In the summer months, you'll find an amusement park in the place of Woolman Rink and a swimming pool at Lasker Rink. Number 4. The Great Lawn This 55-acre oval-shaped lawn was not part of the original Central Park. The site originally served as one of New York City's first reservoirs until 1931 when it got filled with excavation material from Rockefeller Center and the 8th Avenue subway line. Located in the middle of the park from 79th to 85th Street, the Great Lawn plays host to many large gatherings, famous performances, concerts, multiple baseball diamonds, as well as a place for simple relaxation. Number 5. Belvedere Castle Located in the middle of the park, off of 79th Street, this mini castle sitting on thick slabs of Vista Rock acts as a Central Park Visitor Center. The name Belvedere means beautiful view in Italian, which implies exactly that. The castle towers will provide visitors with the highest and best views of the park and the neighboring cityscape. This stunning stone attraction contains exhibit rooms and an observation deck and hosts a multitude of free family and community programs throughout the year. Number 6. Turtle Pond Named for the large number of turtles that reside in the pond with other numerous species of wildlife, Turtle Pond is a small part of what is left of the city's original reservoir, which was later filled to create the Great Lawn. It sits alongside Belvedere Castle and is another one of Central Park's designated quiet zones. It's a nature sanctuary and provides a relaxing escape from the noisier sections of the park. Number 7. Strawberry Fields Named after the famous Beatles song, Strawberry Fields is an area dedicated to the memory of John Lennon. The memorial features benches, a floral border, and the famous circular Imagine Mosaic which can be found on Central Park West off of West 72nd Street, very close to where John Lennon was killed. This spot is a designated quiet zone and a garden of peace. Number 8. Sheep Meadow Another designated quiet zone, 
This 15-acre expanse, which runs from West 66th to West 69th Street, is known as Central Park's largest pastoral lawn and reserved only for quiet picnicking and relaxation. Sheep Meadow sits on top of original rocky and swampy terrain that was later blasted away and filled over with four feet of soil. The name Sheep Meadow is derived from the flock of 200 sheep that formerly grazed the area in the earlier part of the 20th century. Number 9. Tavern on the Green Originally built in 1870 as a sheepfold for the sheep that grazed in the nearby Sheep Meadow, Tavern on the Green is now an iconic restaurant visited by millions every year. Open seven days a week, this landmark restaurant serves breakfast, brunch, lunch, and dinner. Located at 66th Street in Central Park West, Tavern on the Green is known as one of the nation's highest grossing independent restaurants and reservations must be made at least two months in advance. Number 10. Bethesda Terrace This architectural marvel was originally designed as the park's central meeting place. Back in the heyday, if you were a part of high society, it was the place to be. It was the place to see and to be seen. However, today, New Yorkers and tourists from all walks of life can be seen enjoying the sights at Bethesda Terrace. Located at the 72nd Street Cross Drive and overlooking the Central Park Lake and Woods, it features an upper and lower terrace connected by a set of grand staircases, a covered arcade with beautifully tiled ceiling, and of course, the famous Bethesda Fountain in the middle. Number 11. The Dairy Located closer to the East 65th Street entrance, the dairy was constructed in 1870 at a time when fresh milk was hard for parents to obtain for their children. It served as a place that provided milk and snacks to the children in the park. However, today, this Victorian Gothic-style building serves as Central Park's main visitor center and gift shop. Number 12. The Pond just a few feet from the Plaza Hotel in Fifth Avenue is an ecosystem teeming with natural wildlife. In this highly visited part of Central Park, you will find many species of birds and turtles basking in the sun and just living the life. The pond features a serene natural environment among its impressive backdrop of the city skyline and the ever popular Gap Style Bridge. It's a great place to feed the ducks while watching the people go by. Number 13. The Arsenal Located on 5th Avenue and 64th Street and designed to resemble a medieval fortress, the Arsenal is one of the only two buildings that existed before Central Park. It was completed in 1851 as a munitions supply depot for the National Guard. Today, it's home to the headquarters of New York City Parks and the Central Park Zoo. The Arsenal is open free to the public Mondays to Fridays and is the main place where visitors can view original artifacts from the park's history since the beginning. Number 14. The Ramble This 38-acre woodsy area between West 66th and West 79th Street features several winding paths, rustic bridges, an artificial stream, and a former small cave. Due to its dense forest-like vegetation, the Ramble attracts many migrating birds avid bird watchers, in addition to those looking for anonymous sexual encounters. Definitely not a place for innocent eyes or the faint of heart. Number 15. The Reservoir Built in the 1860s as a temporary water supply for New York City and capable of holding 1 billion gallons of water, this reservoir was decommissioned in 1993. With the millions of New York City households, it would only take four hours for the city to go through the 1 billion gallons of water. Today, the 106-acre reservoir located between 86 and 96th Street stands as the largest body of water in Central Park and the running track surrounding it makes a great spot for those early morning joggers. Number 16. The Carousel since its inception in 1871, the Central Park Carousel has undergone four different models over the years. Located at the southern end of the park near East 65th Street, the current carousel happens to be one of the largest in the country. It features 57 hand-carved horses and two chariots. 
attracting over 250,000 riders per year, the Central Park Carousel is one of the park's most favorite old-time attractions. Number 17, the Normberg Bandshell. This is Central Park's official acoustical music arena. Located midway between East and West 71st Street, the park's original bandshell was replaced by the Normberg Bandshell in 1923. Today, throughout the summer months, you can attend free outdoor classical music concerts representing a multitude of unique orchestras. Free concert tickets can be obtained through the Normberg Orchestral Concerts website. Number 18, Conservatory Water. Not to be mistaken for the Central Park Conservatory, Conservatory Water is an ornamental pond popular for its model boats. There you can find children and boat enthusiasts alike navigating radio and wind-powered boats across this vast reflective pool. The pool is located mid-park from East 72nd to East 75th Street and hosts other activities in the area surrounding it, such as children's storytelling and bird watching. In the winter months, the water level is usually lowered for free public ice skating. Number 19, the Low Boathouse. This is where you will go to catch a gondola ride for that romantic evening. Over the years, Central Park's main boathouse has undergone many renovations and facelifts before manifesting into the boathouse we've come to know today as the Loeb Boathouse. There, visitors can rent rowboats, hire an authentic Venetian gondola, or simply enjoy a nice dinner on the deck of the Lakeside Restaurant overlooking spectacular views of the lake. Located at the northeastern tip of the lake between East 74th and 75th Streets, the Loeb Boathouse is a pleasant way to spend a summer afternoon. Number 20, the Delacorte Theater. Located just off of 81st Street in Central Park West, overlooking stunning views of Turtle Pond and the Great Lawn, the Delacorte Theater is best known for hosting its free Shakespeare in the Park productions that hundreds of people attend every summer. The theater is an open-air venue offering clear views of the stage from any seat in the house. Tickets are free and can only be purchased on the same day, so be sure to arrive early. This cultural tradition began as far back as 1954 and in 1960 became a permanent amphitheater that tourists and native New Yorkers flock to every year. And for sticking with me to the very end, I've decided to throw you a bonus hotspot. It's number 21, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. How could I not include this world-famous museum when it takes up so much of Central Park's real estate? To be exact, the Metropolitan Museum sits off of 5th Avenue between 80th and 84th Streets and occupies a whopping 11.5 acres of Central Park. Within its walls, you will find over 5,000 years of art history and hundreds of thousands of pieces from around the globe. Did you know that parts of the museum's back wall is enveloped in glass, offering you serene, picturesque views into the park? That in itself is an exhibit. Did you also know that the Metropolitan Museum has a rooftop garden offering you one of the most gorgeous aerial views of Central Park? Like I said, I couldn't talk about Central Park without including the Metropolitan Museum. It is an integral part of the Central Park experience. And with that said, I will leave you here so that you can go off and explore this incredible park at your very own leisure. With so much to see and do, you'll quickly realize that when it comes to New York City Central Park, there's never a dull moment. If you'd like to share any of your own experiences or any Central Park discoveries which I haven't mentioned, feel free to share them with us in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more on New York City, our favorite city that never sleeps. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see each other next time.